<laughs> We're ready. <laughs> Please stand and sing, We Come Today With Me. God speaks to me, both verses.
instead of a, a Bible verse this morning, I'm going to share with you a quote from St. Patrick. The Lord is greater than all. I have said enough. That's it. That's all you needed to say. The Lord is greater than all. Oh, yeah, but I've got problems. Um, you know, there's, there's not enough money to get to the end of the month. That's a real problem. <clears throat> well, there's this something that the doctor is telling me I'm experiencing, and I don't like that. God is greater than all, though. God is greater than the inner problems, or the financial problems, or the interpersonal problems, or the neighbor, the noisy neighbor that you that annoys you so much. God is greater than all. What a wonderful piece of advice. When the thought comes into our heads, yeah, but this is really bad. This is really, really bad. What am I going to do? God is greater than all. And all of a sudden we, we have to acknowledge that. We have to realize the truth that this infinite being, this being of all power and of all love, all knowledge, all wisdom, is as involved with you as the dearest person you have ever met. Is totally aware of you and everything within you and everything about you and everything going on in your life. And is fully there. Fully there. <coughs> God is greater than it all. And as we realize that, not only does our faith increase, but we tap ever more into that stream of good that never ends. That stream of good that, that this God that loves us unconditionally wants us to have. For those of us who have children, what do we want for them? Everything. Every good thing. We can only do so much as parents, though, or as aunts, or as um, grandmothers, or whatever. We can only do so much, but God can do it all. He is greater than all, and that's all you have to think. That's, I've said enough, he said. We stop right there. He did say enough. Let's let it be enough for us. The Lord is greater than all. Shall we say our divine science <clears throat> statement of being? God is all both invisible and invisible. One presence, one mind, one power is all. This one that is all is perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance. I am the individualized expression of God, and am ever one with this perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance. Good morning. I was reading on the back of the program here, symbology of the cross of the resurrection. Jesus' death and resurrection taught us the great truth that when we know our oneness with God, we can cross over every difficulty. And, and this is a song that I, I usually do at Easter that I wrote, and that's what this song is all about. There's one thing that's more important. I always take your chewing gum up before you sing. <laughs> I did this one time and it fell off in the four-way. 
<laughs> where people were walking while I was singing and I had to stop and grab me. You see, it works pretty good as long as stay. Okay. <laughs> When life has you hurting and you're all alone and you feel so uncertain and that all hope is gone, well, you won't find the answers in this world we're living in. Well, he won't give up on you if you don't give up on him. Roll away the stone, roll away the stone, I pray and I ask God to roll away the stone, roll away the stone, roll away the stone, I pray and I ask God to roll away the stone. When there's no rhyme or reason for anything you do And the pain that you're feeling goes deep inside of you Well, there's no problem too big or small that you have to face alone You need a helping hand to roll away the stone Roll away the stone, roll away the stone. I pray and I ask God to roll away the stone. Roll away the stone, roll away the stone. I pray and I ask God to roll away the stone. When I wrote this song, these were the verses that came to me in the day. It was kind of spread out over the whole day, and I could not stop the process. When I wrote the second verse, which I just sang, I thought I was done. I thought, boy, this, this is, was heavy on me. <laughs> and I was so glad to be done with it. Well, in the middle of the night, this is when the third verse came to me. And it all came together, and I realized why this song was written. Jesus' life was ended on the cross on Calvary. All our sins forgiven when he died for you and me. There's no greater sacrifice the world has ever known. God gave his only son, then he rolled away the stone. Roll away the stone, roll away the stone, I pray and I ask God to roll away the stone, roll away the stone, roll away the stone, I pray and I ask God to roll away the stone. I pray and I ask God to roll away the stone. get still for our meditation time. Life is so busy and we don't have very much time to uh, get still sometimes. And I have to do this and this and this. And those precious moments slip away. But here, now, 
We can get still. <clears throat> we can take that deep breath in and very slowly let it out. And feel both body and mind relax and become calm. One more deep breath in and out. Slowly, slowly. Shall we consider another quote from St. Patrick? He borrowed it from Psalms. still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am ourselves to just be. Knowing that we are filled to overflowing with a spiritual presence that was made in the image and likeness of God that this is our primary being. And that life consists of expressing this inner being, <clears throat> this dimension of us that is pure love, as God is. We seek to express what we truly are at all times and in all places, in all circumstances. Someone once said, if it isn't love, then it becomes a lesson. We don't want lessons. And what solves a problem and gives us understanding before we have to have the lesson is love itself. Right now we are filled with love. We are surrounded with love. We are supported with love. We are existing in a milieu of love incarnate because that is what God is and God is in the midst of us, surrounding us, everywhere present. Love and yet more love. Right now, we send that love that we are to all the people we know who need prayers, who need love, 
who need hope, who need health, who need peace, who need more good. And in sending love, we are giving them the greatest of gifts. Send love to all those who think as we do, who think very differently. Those who are positive and those who are negative. Those who help and those who don't. We send it to one and all. For just as Jesus said, God sends the rain on the just and the unjust. So do we send forth love this day to all, one and all. In the 90 seconds we will have, in just a moment or two, 90 seconds of silence. I invite you to send that love out as you've never done it before. Pour it out. And make each person you think of a healthier, happier, more loving person. Make our country, our world, happier, healthier, with love abounding for all. Right now, to me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. <clears throat> and we rest in his love. We rest in his life, his wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, his peace, his joy, his creativity, and absolute, unconditional love. Taking it in, soaking it up, and then giving it forth. Blessing ourselves, blessing all around us, those far away, and blessing our world. And for that reminder that we can be still, we can be love. We give deepest thanks.
version of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed is thy name. Thy kingdom is come, thy will is done on earth as it is in heaven. Thou givest us this day our daily bread. Now forgivest us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Thou leadest us not into temptation, but dost deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. title of my talk this morning is Happy St. Patrick's Day a Day Late. <laughs> and in honor of Irish humor, I had two shamrocks when I left home. <laughs> I do not know where one of them is. But <laughs> get when you cross poison ivy with a four-leaf clover? A rash of good luck. <laughs> a man said, I went out drinking on St. Patrick's Day, so I took the bus home. That might not be a big deal for you, but I've never driven a bus before. <laughs> Finally, I'll take you out of your misery. <laughs> How is your best friend like a four-leaf clover? Because they're hard to find and lucky to have. Okay. <laughs> Come out from my disguise. Well, I've heard about this man all my life. Goodness knows, I went to parochial school for nine years. And uh, we celebrated St. Patrick's Day, which uh, was just a name. He was a saint, he had a special day, but that's about as much as I knew. And uh, when I started digging into his life, he had a very interesting life. Very interesting. Patrick was born in the latter part of the 14th century in Britain, which was at the time a Roman colony. I don't know if you knew that, but Britain was a Roman colony. His father was a, a deacon in the Catholic Church, and he was a decurion. A decurion, I had to look it up. It meant he was a member of the Senate of his hometown, like, like the, I don't know, so Board of Supervisors or something. Uh, decurions were drawn from the wealthy middle class citizens of a town. They were thought to be upstanding, they'd know what to do, and so forth, and so they, he was, his father was a decurion. Patrick's grandfather was a Catholic priest. Apparently they let, allowed him to marry back then, but Patrick was not involved with religion at all. He was, he was not an active believer when he was young. But when he was 16 years old, <coughs> He was kidnapped from his father's villa by Irish peasants who sold him into slavery in Ireland. During his six years of enslavement, he was forced to take care of the sheep. He was the sheep herder. That's a cold, lonely job, too. And he say, said later, though, as a captive, uh, that time was critical to his spiritual development. He wrote a book called Confessions, and he explained that the Lord had mercy on his youth and his ignorance, and during those years gave him the opportunity to pray, to strengthen his relationship with God, that in that time he felt that his sins were forgiven, and he absolutely converted to Christianity. It became a mainstay in his life, super important. But after six years as a slave, he heard a voice. 
he had heard a voice and it was telling him that he would soon go home and that his ship was ready. When he heard these words in his head, he left everything. He ran away at once and he walked to a port 200 miles away. There he found a ship. Sure enough, his ship was waiting. And he managed to persuade the sailors to let him get on board with them. Well, after three days sailing, they landed in Britain, but they didn't know where they were. They, they were lost. For 28 days, they were lost. But finally, he made his way back home, and he was reunited with his family. And by this time, he was in his early 20s, of course. A few years after returning home, Patrick had a vision. This is what he said the vision was. I saw a man coming as if he were from Ireland. His name was Victoricus. And he carried many letters, and he gave me one of them. I read the headline. The Voice of the Irish, it said. As I began the letter, I imagined in that moment that I heard the voice of many people. And they cried out as with one voice, We appeal to you, holy servant boy, to come and walk among us. Well, Patrick didn't go to Ireland right at that time, certainly. But he did go to Europe. And he studied uh, to become a priest, and he was ordained. In 432, he returned to Ireland, finally, because he had never been able to get that vision out of his mind. He followed his intuitive impulse and went to Ireland as a missionary. Now, at the time, Ireland was controlled by the polytheistic Picts and Anglo-Saxons. But Patrick uh, chose to return there anyway and uh, didn't know what kind of a greeting he would get in arriving, a Catholic priest, a Catholic missionary. Among all these polytheistic, they had many, many different gods, the Picts and the Anglo-Saxons. Well, sure enough, he didn't get a very warm welcome at all. They ran him off in the first place where he stopped. He was regarded as a foreigner, this interloper who wants to tell us what to do. Many, many of the ruling elite were hostile to him. But over time, St. Patrick baptized thousands of people and brought them into Christianity. One time he was beaten, he was robbed of everything he had, he was put into chains, and uh, perhaps awaiting execution for all he knew. But he was released, amazingly. Many years later, he was imprisoned again, this time for 60 days. Now, that was nothing to uh, sneeze at. 60 days in a prison in the 5th century was, well, you could die quite easily. There he was accused of some financial impropriety. He had to go to trial and settle the accusation. But uh, he kept on going. He kept on moving. He ordained many priests. The priests that were needed to lead the new Christian communities that he had established. He converted wealthy women, some of whom became nuns in the face of family opposition. He also dealt with the sons of kings. He converted them, too. Not the seniors, but the juniors, the younger people. They, they took in Christianity and, and were thrilled by it, raised up in spirit by it. He traveled around the island here and there, winning many of these Picts and Anglo-Saxons to Christianity. He said of the Irish, Never before did they know of God, except to serve idols and unclean things. But now, they have become the people of the Lord and are called children of God. The sons and daughters of the leaders of the Irish are seen to be monks and virgins of Christ. 
Later on, he was appointed the first bishop of Armagh and the primate of, um, of Ireland. So he was, by all measures, the most outstanding success. Even in the 6th century, just 50 to 100 years later, he was both known and greatly revered. Saint Patrick, although he's called a saint, was never canonized. He was, he was just a saint to the people and everybody <coughs> took it from there. But he has been the primary saint of uh, Ireland since the 6th century. Now, Patrick was not a well-educated person. He, um, his parents didn't insist on it, and he, he uh, regretted it all his life, that he didn't have a fine, robust education. But he wrote, certainly. And he thought, and he was quoted by a great many of people a great many times. And you can find some of these quotes. You go to the internet. There are plenty of them there. And I wanted to share some of the wise things that he said and wrote, because we hear echoes of the same spiritual truths in our divine science writings as well. So not everything, of course, that he said or wrote fitted into our spiritual beliefs, because after all, he taught and lived a primitive <coughs> Catholic. But I cherry-picked some of these quotes, and I think you might find them uh, that they find that they sound uh, familiar and perhaps well loved. Saint Patrick said, "I arise today through God's strength to pilot me, God's might to uphold me, God's wisdom to guide me, God's ear to hear me, God's word <clears throat> to speak for me, God's hand to guide me, God's way to lie before me." God's shield to protect me, afar and anear, alone or in a multitude. That's a lovely, lovely saying. And for us, it really is another way of saying that God is omnipresent. God is acting through us, around us, as us, all the time, in all places, at all times. Alone or in a multitude, God is working through us, supporting and helping us. And that would be a great affirmation to use of a morning. Uh, thank you, St. Patrick. Because it emphasizes God's immediacy, God's plan, his good in our lives. Uphold me, pilot me, guide me, hear me, speak to me, guard me. Shield and protect me. Yeah. That good is right there. No matter how life might look right now. No matter the dark spots. God is present. Patrick said, He watched over me before I knew him. And before I learned his <coughs> sense. Or even distinguished between good and evil. Yeah. Now, I don't think there is anyone among us who can't look back in their lives and think, wow, if I had decided to do that, or if I had chosen that path, my whole life would have been different. My whole existence might have been the most dreadful, problematic, difficult thing how much better my life is today because I didn't make those decisions. Now, the decisions we make when we're young we are usually made on the basis of that spur of a moment, you know, I think I'll do this, without thinking anything through or having adequate information about something. So today, in retrospect, we can absolutely see that we were being watched over, just as he said. He watched over me. We were being watched over and helped, even though God wasn't yet part of our thinking whatsoever. Probably we didn't even think of him once every year or two. Just not, you know, church. Ah. 
He wasn't a part of our lives, and yet he was totally conscious of us. And he was helping us, whether we knew it or not, gently nudging us toward our higher good. We know that God's grace eases us through confusing, chaotic times in our lives. But how much better, how much better it is if we know this, how much less tense we are if we know in our heart of hearts that we can turn to God and we'll get answers, we'll get directions. It may not come as a clear thought, but we somehow will be shown the way. An idea will come. A person will appear. God in another disguise. That's all. St. Patrick said, I prayed in the woods and on the mountain even before dawn. I felt no hurt from the snow or ice or rain. He seemed to say that his, his feeling of closeness, his feeling of oneness with God protected him, protected him from any harm or discomfort from the elements uh, or nature. Now, oh boy, that's loud testimony to the depth of your belief. If he felt protected by God from, from chill and rain and snow, my goodness. And I don't know, some of you might feel the same way, but I'll tell you, I haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> uh, my faith is not quite strong enough so that I've gotten to the point that I don't feel physical discomfort from snow and ice and <laughs> no. But, but, I believe that all of us have prayed when we heard bad news. Or when we heard very good news. I believe we prayed when we were at home, or when we were in church. I believe we prayed in the car sometimes. Or like him, when we were in the woods, or on a mountain. We prayed and then we found ourselves spontaneously giving a deep sigh. Followed by some kind of an inner release of tension. It was, it was a sign of release from some kind of unconscious fear or stress that we'd been carrying over some situation or a problem. And because that's what prayer does. It releases us on an inner level. Now other people can say, oh, don't worry, you know, everything's going to be fine. But when we pray, something else is taking place. Something else is bubbling up within us to release us, to heal us on the inside. The prayer of faith helps us. And if we happen to be praying for some other person, it unquestionably helps them. Praying for a difficult person or a scary situation not only helps each one of us, but it almost magically changes the energy between ourselves and that situation. The situation has a way of disappearing. The, the person that's been so difficult has a way of, of sweetening up and just relaxing a little bit and not being as problematic. Mm. Prayer. It works. And a final quote from St. Patrick. I am certain in my heart that all that I am, I have received from God. All that I am, I have received from God. Oh, my dearest hope is that we would each and all say, absolutely, all that I have, I have received from God. Everyone, if we can feel certain to the depths of our being that we are God's child, that we are 
loved unconditionally by him, that we were made in his image, which is the, the most sublime of gifts. All that our interests and talents and strengths, our originality, our creativity, all that and so much more has been a gift from God because that's what we have received from him and far more. Then we can only roll back on our heels and say thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all that I have received from you. Today we say thank you to God, and we say thank you to St. Patrick. Shall we go with him? Sixteen centuries ago, how life is different. And yet, people are very much the same. And what is absolutely the same is God's presence and his love and his help. His hearing and knowing us, his participation in life with us, his buoying us up when we have questions and we have concerns and we hear bad news. His joy for us and in us when we achieve our goals, when they look forward with hope and enthusiasm for tomorrow and the day after that and the day after that. Father, thank you. Beloved friend, thank you. Thank you for the things that Patrick did and said. <coughs> Those things that are reaping good even today. And may we, in our own way, <coughs> bring forth love so that the things that we do will reap blessings and benefits, not just tomorrow, and not just for the people around us, but will spread like a pebble in a pond, <coughs> ripple upon ripple, <coughs> blessing people near and far, here, and a long time since, hence. Thank you, dear God. Amen. Very uplifting. Wow. I always try to stay real mindful of all that is given to me and the things that happen from God and always and that just kind of just keeps it going when I hear that you know things simple like you know I walk through the woods a lot with my dog and I see him trotting along at 10 years old and he's still healthy as he can be to me I mean he, he's such a great companion and so I'm very thankful for that because God knows I need him oh anyway let me get this get this thing rolling here now I was in D.C. Well, several years ago, many years ago, and I was with a band. And I don't know if y'all ever heard of Lou Rawls, the singer. You know what I'm talking about? Just very soulful. He was a black singer. And uh, we were doing this song. I think it's called You'll Never Find. It's like, you'll never find. You know, I'm doing this thing, you know. Well, then we took a break, and I walked back in the kitchen, and this black gentleman back there, he said, my, I believe you have one in the woodpile. <laughs> he said, I thought I was listening to Lou Rawls. <laughs> so, I said, well, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. So it wasn't long after that, I wrote a song. 
and it's uh, it's a black spiritual type song. And when I wrote it, of course, I, I recorded it and put it away. And I've never sung this anywhere before, so I'm a bit nervous about this. Now, I tried to put guitar with it, and it just doesn't work. It needs rip, snorting, piano, and organ, and a lot of hand clapping and things like that. So I'm just going to try to sing this without that, without any, any of that, and uh, we'll see what happens. I might get y'all to help me out here just a little bit. Oh, wait a minute, let me pull up the sheet. That's not, I don't want to sing the wrong words here. It would not work. I never worry about having shoes on my feet, about the clothes on my back, or my next bite to eat. He gives me shelter from the storm, and when it's cold, he keeps me warm. Now you may wonder, why I have such faith. I've been washed in the blood and saved by grace. Ain't no doubt he's by my side. I know the Lord he will provide. If I struggle down life's road, I know my Jesus will carry my heavy load. And as long as I can do his will. I'll spread his word and that his love is real. If I stumble, Lord, if I fall, he gives me strength to carry on. Ain't no doubt he's by my side. I know the Lord he will provide. Come on. Now if I struggle down my soul, Can't do his will. I'll spread his word and that his love is real. If I stumble, Lord, if I fall, he gives me strength to carry on. Ain't no doubt, he's by my side. I know the Lord, he will provide. He will provide. He will provide. I know he will. He will provide. He will provide. I know the Lord, He will, He will provide. There we go. I can't keep a beat, so my wood power is very <laughs> Now's the time for the blessings of the gifts. It's the time that we get to give back. <clears throat> if you follow me in the orders of service, today I acknowledge God omnipresent as the source of all good, as the source of my good. With this acknowledgement, I accept His will, which is abundance in every aspect of my life. I release all thoughts of lack and limitation, and I am open and receptive to the increased flow of abundance to me right now. I joyfully accept the gifts of life and give freely of the special gift that I am. Through me, God omnipresent, bless us and multiplies this gift for all. Amen. Okay, I'll try to make these short. I always say that they may not be long, so 
We get, go to lunch after church. We're going to El Rodeo. Hope everybody can join us, join us there for that. Uh, we're going to be having the events uh, calendar coming out, and we'll get with Nancy this week and uh, put out some things that we decided on for the rest of the year. Not saying they're written in stone, as we've said before. All things can be changed. Um, people will appreciate all the surveys. If you didn't turn in a survey, you can still do so, and we'll look at those and see if you had any comments. There are a couple of things that people wanted that we might uh, we want to try to get together and um, come up with something that they can do on a regular basis, like the book reading club, and uh, people wanted to do that, and they also wanted to have a card night um, maybe once a month or something. So we're going to be looking at things that people want to do on a regular basis along with our other events that we're going to do. So we'll be trying to get that out in the next week or so. Also coming up will be the Good Friday service on uh, March the 30th at 7 p.m. here. Um, uh, again, we have that every, every year. We have a sunrise service on Easter Sunday at 7 a.m., and then we'll have a river service at 11. Uh, we'll be making announcements about that again. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, da, da, da. Okay, the flowers today, uh, there are two sets of flowers. Uh, Rachel, uh, uh, Lucas, these flowers for her mother's <coughs> transition, and these flowers were for Stephanie's birthday. She's not here, but I will see that she gets them. Um, other than that, I think that's all we got. Do you have something? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, many of you know, you knew uh, Faye Cabalfine, who is uh, Carrie Rothrock's mother. She passed away this last Monday. Oh, it was sad to hear that. She was a hun I almost 102. Oh, yes. And uh, a wonderful little lady, about four and a half feet tall. Tiny, tiny person. But please uh, remember them all in your prayers. Thank you. There's going to be a memorial service in July when the whole family, which is a very large family, right. okay. can get together and come from the Philippines and okay. other places. Okay. Our closing hymn is hymn number 86. It is no secret. Both verses. Hymn number 86. Stand when you're able.